Hey there, this is Josh, Tony Ridge Farmer. I've been getting a lot of questions about timber. We're cutting timber here on the farm. These are some of the machines that they use to cut the timber. People are asking me, how much money are you actually making on the timber? Well, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it. Is it really worth it? Is it really worth cutting the timber? I, you know, it's a toss up. So let's talk about today what's going on over here on the farm. These are the logs and what I'm making on the timber cutting operation, okay? And what the main goal is here too. So uh, if you're thinking about cutting timber, this might be a little bit of food for thought. If you're a tree hugger, this could be a little bit of food for thought too. This is about forest management and this is also a little bit about why I'm cutting timber on our farm. So come on along today and we'll show you a little bit of the logs that we're cutting. We'll talk about what the logs are and we'll talk about the timber cutting and how profitable it is. Come on along, I think you'll enjoy the vlog today. Maybe you'll learn a little something you didn't know about cutting timber. And also, DEET sucks. I don't want to use it. I've got to use it and I'll tell you why. First, let's address DEET. Guys, I don't want to use this stuff, okay? This is an insect repellent that we absolutely cannot do without on the farm. Uh, I'll post a link to it down below. This is the Max DEET 40%. I also have 100% DEET. This stuff is bad. It's not good for you. Uh, you know, I like to just spray it on my clothes, but sometimes I spray it on my legs. Sometimes I spray it on my arms. The story here goes, I got bit by a spider on my arm right here and it's swollen up you can't really tell but it's swelled up like this big i don't know what kind of spider it was black widow brown recluse or just a regular old garden variety spider but i am not letting this happen again if i can help it also we have what we call chiggers and i'm going to do a video about chiggers what are chiggers well one day i'll do a video about chiggers chiggers are these little stinging biting little insects also known as grass mites or noceums those little guys will tear your up. I'm telling you right now. My legs have at least 50 bites on them from ticks, tiny little ticks and chiggers. Something you need to know about being outside in this area at this time of year, it is chigger and tick season. It got really, really dry and those things will latch onto you and tear you up and it it's not cool and it's not fun and all the guys that are cutting timber right now are ate up with them too and the place they like to go the most is kind of right down in there they like to nest they like to nest in your own little private nest not cool here's a pile of logs these are what you would call saw logs okay these logs will go to a sawmill and be cut into lumber for you to build furniture out of for you to use in your house for you to use all throughout your life things are made of wood okay so if you're a quote unquote tree hugger or a tree lover believe me i'm a tree lover also but these trees need to be harvested and i'll show you why here in a minute i'm going to take you and show you the ends of the trees and what's going on behind the scenes that you don't see with big trees in your forest these aren't monster trees they're not this big this isn't the pacific northwest okay these are 40 50 60 year old trees maybe maybe 40 50 60 year old trees that we need to get out of here, okay? So we've got wild cherry, we've got poplar, we've got sycamore, we've got oak, we've got a big pretty wild cherry right there. It's awesome stuff. If you wanted to make your own furniture, boy, a wild cherry log about that big would be awesome to cut up and dry and make your own furniture, but we're not making our own furniture. We're buying our own furniture with the money that we make for timber. So we're going off tripod here. We're gonna go over, and I'm gonna show you why we're cutting logs, okay? Why we're cutting timber. These are poplar logs right here behind me, and this is a poplar. Beautiful, beautiful wood. The longer it sits out here, the more of a chance of getting black spots in it, like this area right here. That's not desirable at the timber yard, so these guys need to get these logs loaded up pretty quick. Also, I'm going to take you down and show you some of the wood, what it looks like on the end, and the sizes of the logs. You can see, you know, my hand's about eight inches or so. I've got a pretty big hand. I've got a pretty decent saw log right here. It's not huge but it needed to be cut because all these trees are just growth that happened after a field was neglected and we're taking back the fields. These are nice, healthy logs right here. These are poplar logs. Down here, we've got a little bit of oak, okay? And we've got some sycamore right here, okay? And we've got some more oak over here, kind of neat. We're gonna go down here and show you a lot of why we're cutting what we're cutting. So as a poplar gets bigger, look what we have. 
What is that? It's hollow, okay? When these trees get so big, they just get hollow inside, guys, and they're not doing me any good being hollow. If I want to be a good steward of the land and a good manager of my forest and a good manager of my farm, I'm going to take back what I don't need. I'm going to mow what I don't need, and we're getting a little bit of money for it, so we'll talk about the money aspect of it, okay? Before we talk about the money aspect of it, let's look around at some of the stuff here. These are bridge timbers, okay? These timbers right here are used by the logging company to put over top of water. There are a lot of rules and regulations that we have to follow, environmental rules, in order to proceed with the logging operation. So back in the old days, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, when these logging operations were all around the south, water runoff and watershed was not an issue. It's a big issue now, okay? And protecting the watershed and protecting our streams is a very big issue. That's why we have these timbers. When we go to cross the creek, we make an area, we lay the timbers across, and they cruise across and drag them with these big pieces of equipment that you'll see behind me in a second. So FYI, logging here in North Carolina is not just a podunk hillbilly operation, guys. This is an operation that works closely with the U.S. Forest Service to make sure that we do the right thing, that we cut the right trees, that we do everything we should do to protect our streams. Now for what you really might have watched the video for. Guys, the timber operation, they're cutting somewhere in the neighborhood of four to seven acres of timber per week. The profitability on this is I'm getting somewhere in the neighborhood of $700 to $2,500 every week, depending on the quality of timber. Now, the timber that we looked at just a few minutes ago is very profitable timber. It's good timber. It brings big bucks. I say big bucks, but the way it works is my, my timber operation, we split it 50-50. They cut the trees, they take them to the sawmill, they sell them, and we split it 50%. They take the pulp wood, which is wood that's undesirable, you know, this big, that's made into paper, that's also made into plywood, and other types of veneered furniture, I get a 35% cut of that. So, is it very profitable? It can be very profitable. If you have rows of pine trees this big, and they're cut in rows, and the guys can go snip, 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 snip. But what I have is overgrown crappy forest that used to be fields and grew all every which way. So now we're taking back those fields. We're taking the Stony Ridge farm from about 50 acres of field all the way open to about 100 acres of pasture land and field. This is an arduous chore that I'm going to have to handle. So is cutting the timber going to be profitable for us? Absolutely not, because every single dime that we make from cutting this timber goes right back into the farm. It goes into equipment, it goes into clearing fields, it goes into grass seed. I'll be planting somewhere in the neighborhood of nine to $10,000 worth of grass seed after these guys leave. So, is the timber operation profitable? Yes, it is if you're replanting trees. No, it's not if you're putting it back into the farm, but it's profiting us in the end, making this farm a wonderful, beautiful place to be. So guys, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. I wanted to come over, show you what was going on in the timber operation. This is what we want. This is how it's going to be. We have to work our way through the nasty parts in order to get the beautiful parts, okay? None of this comes without hard work. I got a lot of people leaving comments, you're so lucky, you're so, it's not luck, guys. It's hard work. If you're not willing to put the work in, you're not gonna get the results out of it, and that's just everything in life, okay? So get to work, get off your butt, do something with yourself, and be proud of it. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Josh Stoney Ridge Farmer. Click that like button, give me a thumbs up. Tell me what you're thinking. All right. We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids.